uh, maybe where you're from and uh, what you need to get out of this workshop today. Or. So I'm Avery White. I'm a PhD student from Ohio State. Okay. And uh, I'm hoping to just use this as kind of an introduction to something I don't know much about. Yet. Yeah. Yet. Okay, and you get, you get the guidebook, which is, uh, if anybody doesn't have one, I, should, I sent most of you a hard copy of it. I, and if not, I mean, as a, an email copy. If not, uh, here's some up here. So there we go. Okay. Morning, I'm Austin Nuffy. I'm also a graduate student in uh, Ohio State University. I'm also just using it as an introductory. Great. And, and research interests are? Um, international security and American national strategy. Okay, good, we'll have to talk later, please. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is gonna sound like a broken record. Um, I'm Drew Rosenberg, also a graduate student at Ohio State, also in international relations, also probably in uh, security, you know, systemic theory and things like that. So just excited to learn more about what this is. <laughs> Okay, and we'll, we'll have a model that deals a little bit with IR. Okay, a little, I, I don't have the full model because the government wouldn't let us have it, but we have, a snap, we have a screenshot of it, okay, and we can talk and develop it a little bit later. Mm -hmm. I'm I spent a whole semester working with somebody on their PhD project on that, so cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a really good point. I uh, started in complexity, at least uh, complexity science, about four or five years ago. And um, I would read stuff, and I had no idea what people said. And then I'd read it again, and I had no idea what people said. So uh, hopefully, uh, some of the materials today, and I can send you whatever you need, uh, make it a little bit clearer, uh, make it a little bit more understandable, because it's taken a while to translate that language from um, uh, biology and evolutionary biology and some of the computer science to make it make it maybe a little bit more palatable for us in social sciences. Oh. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't oh, matter. Okay. It, it, it's whoever, it's yeah, Rand. I'll just, I'm still waking up. Uh, my name is Nick Nolton. It's kind of like Nick Nolte, but the minus the motion of power. Um, I'm a, <laughs> you guys remember me. Um, I'm from University of Florida. I'm a PhD candidate in comparative politics, African politics. Uh, I'm taking this course. Um, on one hand, just trying to get another tool and uh, Box, but at the same time, I want to try and apply it to my research regarding uh, executive decision making in post democratic transition environments. Okay. Uh, and as far as methodology, uh, again, I'm working on research right now, and what I'll do is I'll uh, get qualitative data, quantitative data. I'll uh, turn it all into math and regressions, then I'll make a network analysis of it, and then I'll uh, funnel it into an agent-based model. And we'll talk about that a little bit later. So all the different methodologies to get as complete a picture as, as we can for right now. Or I feel like doing it, right? Because I could spend the rest of my life, so, okay. So uh, some of you may not be interested in being the best programmers in the world, uh, which is okay also. Um, what I've learned is uh, the tools and the vocabulary today whereby a little bit overwhelming sometimes. Um, and we'll repeat it over and over and you'll hear um, self-organization terms like that and emergence and things. Uh, but what it'll do, it'll make you a better team leader. Because usually when I'm on a team, I'm usually on with a computer scientist and uh, you know from different fields, and that way you can ask the right questions and contribute in a better way. So we're just introducing ourselves and say what we want to get out of today. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Barbara Lance uh, from Bowes College, and a lot of the research I do um, focuses on asymmetry and alliances, in particular counterinsurgencies, and so I've heard a lot of I've gotten a lot of feedback about how you can start speaking based modeling in that and just to be able to just be literate in 
the different kind of methodologies since they usually do qualitative methods and focus on um, document research. So just kind of want to have some access to some other methods that may be relevant to my research. And, and one thing to think about, um, if some of you have been doing research on kind of more the traditional end, uh, one thing to think about is maybe with the agent-based modeling, um, what you can do is kind of throw all your regressions in at the same time. Instead of running one experiment, you know, in the models you'll be able to see we can set the parameters and uh, run different variables, independent, dependent, we can run them all at the same time. So that's one of the advantages. Who else don't we know yet? We're just introducing ourselves. Oh, okay. Yeah. Whoever wants to go next. I'll go. How's that? Okay. Thank yeah. you. I'm AJ Robinson. I'm a faculty member at uh, George Washington University. Um, my specialty is collective action, and I run a strategy firm with uh, government agencies and national nonprofits around social movements. So I'm curious to see how this could be applied around the social sector as well. And so also network science is an option for you too. And we'll look at a network movie today and what it looks like. What is that? OK. Uh, hello, my name is Mallory Compton. I'm a PhD candidate from Texas A&M. And I study public policy and comparative political economy. Um, and I'm here to learn something about something I know very little about. Hi, I'm Amanda Robinson. I'm an assistant professor at Ohio State. Um, I mostly focus on identity. Yeah, there's a lot of us. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mostly study identity politics in Sub-Saharan Africa, but I have um, kind of parallel interests in evolution of identity groups and intergroup selection models. So I want to learn. Um, I've done a little bit of that logo, but I have no idea how to extrapolate it to an evolutionary model. So I'm hoping to refresh on what I learned about five years ago. And okay. try to Okay, this afternoon, uh, William Rand is coming, and he's one of the top experts in the world on uh, NetLogo. He just wrote a textbook with Yuri Lewinsky, and uh, so he'll be here, and that's a real treat. He's the expert, so really technical programming questions he would love. And uh, whatever model you want to build, he can build it from scratch for you. And so we just need to kind of come up with a consensus or have conflict, I guess, and model it, so whatever works for you guys. So. Our feelings won't be hurt, I promise. My name is Virgil Sanford. I'm a PhD candidate at George Mason in public policy. Um, I study pro-environmental behavior, but I know there's lots of uh, complexity research and agent-based modeling in the public policy field, a lot going on even sort of around me um, at Mason. And I just wanted to enhance my literacy of the subject. Yeah, uh, George Masonson is one of the leaders, like uh, Michigan and uh, Arizona State and some other places. Uh, I know a, uh, Ohio State starting to come through with some, some programs and stuff like that. It's relatively new uh, in public policy compared to other fields uh, as in economics and sociology. Uh, for example, uh, we'll talk about it. We have our first journal on uh, policy and complex science. Uh, complexity science uh, that we developed out of the, our publisher policy studies organization who provided the food, which is really wonderful, okay? And we'll talk about the journal a little bit. So there's a lot of room. We have our first uh, complexity group in uh, public policy uh, at APSA this year. We have our first round table on Friday. So just to give you an idea, we're still a little bit young on that. So we've got lots of opportunities to grow and you guys will help it grow, so. Okay. Um, my name is Elena Gajinova. I'm a researcher at the Max Planck Institute for the Study of Religious and Ethnic Diversity in, in Germany. And uh, we're interested in how sort of, uh, individuals form ethnic and other identities uh, in, respond in diverse settings in response to various stimuli. So um, I figured that's sort of a, a, a model that can uh, bring in the different levels of um, cooperation can actually be useful to explore those questions, much like Amanda. <laughs> 
Yeah, natural. Yeah, yeah. natural, natural. Um, one thing to think about today is uh, whether you're talking about countries, uh, whether you're talking about ethnic groups, uh, tribes, families, uh, scale. And uh, one thing complexity allows you to move along scale very, very carefully, very easily, um, in, in a way more creatively maybe than you're used to. So that's what the agent based modeling. So maybe you see, uh, I don't know, 100 uh, agents up there, but you could represent maybe 1,000 or 100,000 with them. So you can use the scale a little bit to see how, how your, your uh, different hypotheses work out with it. So. Mm -hmm. I'm Bill Brenner. I'm an analyst at the U.S. government. I received my Ph.D. from Johns Hopkins University and, uh, in international relations and just a general interest in the application of different analytic methods and for professional and also on academic work. Okay, and, and we'll do the basics today. Uh, we won't do like sensitivity analysis and some of the other deeper stuff, so, okay. I'm Erica Iverson. I'm a Ph.D. candidate at the Graduate Center at City University of New York, and uh, I study migration I think it's a natural fit because in any research there, there's a story to the research. Uh, we know regression, we know the numbers and statistics, but also uh, we can tell the story and uh, at least from my perspective, uh, the, the models, the simulations allow us to uh, tell the story about the movement and the things like that. <gasps> what happened? There we go. Okay. There we go. Thanks. Who, who else? We had some other people just come in. We're just introducing ourselves and what, what we hope to get out of today. Mm -hmm. Hi. Um, I'm Ray Lee. I'm a graduate student at the University of California, Berkeley. Uh, my interest is um, in uh, norms of um, international order. Um, so. I'm looking to get out of this some ideas for how to model maybe the evolution of ideas. Okay, so back to evolution. We've got a couple people in evolution today. Okay, in any agent-based model, it's uh, always going to be a stronger model, at least uh, according to the experts, uh, if it's evolutionary. Okay, that's going to be strong depending on what your research problem is, and also if you use randomness, so you can model the world a little bit more. Okay, anybody else want to introduce yourself, or we got we got everybody, or yeah. Hi, my name is Dongguk Lee. I'm from. Fleming Graduate University, and I'm studying regional politics. Okay. Hopefully, this can help the micro level analysis. Okay. So, for agents, when we talk about agents as part of our simulations, are uh, so we can talk about agents at the regional level, at the national level, we can use an uh, agent as a country, uh, as a tribe. So, we'll talk about those different uh, agents that we can use in our models and also what some of the attributes are. All right, and so that gets just about everybody. I, I handed out some of you a piece of paper, and uh, I want y'all, when you get a chance, please uh, to go to our journal. Uh, it's called the uh, Journal on Com uh, Policy and Complex Systems. And uh, this came about because there was no place to publish research on policy and complexity. Uh, actually, uh, years back, I had done a poster on uh, nanotechnology, how to explain nanotechnology policy. Uh, given a complexity context. And uh, it, was really, it really was one of the top editors came up and said, well, let me tell you what I think complexity in policy is. And he went, blah, 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 blah. And I went, oh, that's exactly what I have on my poster. And uh, actually, they matched up very, very well. And he goes, well, he's a little bit stern. I hope you don't know who it is. But a little bit stern. And he gave me his card. He goes, you need to publish this. Write this up. I go, yes, sir, I will. I'll be glad to. So took detailed everything he said, wrote it up, got a uh, former dean of computer science department, got one of the uh, other people that's a mathematician, also a sociologist, we wrote it up together. I was excited, okay? So handed it in, sent it back in, this does not fit. Okay, all right, send it to my friend's journal. This does not fit, well written. Send it to the third journal, this does not fit. So what we found out that there's a home, there, we needed a home for this type of research. So that's why, that's why we're doing this today. We want you all to uh, publish your research with us. We want you to submit it in. We want to give you feedback. We want to make the highest level of scholarship possible. Uh, so if you can get a chance, you can look up. There's a really good uh, article in here I know on IR and spins and affiliations. And uh, please, if you have any responses, you know, write back to the journal, letters to the editor. Uh, we'll be much more interactive. The difference with this uh, journal and some others, uh, eventually, what we'll do is have the technology, we can put our agent-based models and simulations on there. 
So you can run them too. So if you submit an article with, uh, I don't know, conflict in Bosnia, um, we'll be able to see it and run it. And then hopefully we're trying to be able to provide data sets. So maybe if you're doing research in, I, I don't know, Bosnia too, then we can share the research and the data. So that's a, that's a big dream of ours, but we're working on it slowly, slowly, step by step. So that's number one. Number two, these are my advertisements, okay. Uh, as part of the uh, DuPont Summit, uh, which the Policy Studies Organization, who's sponsoring us today, and also the journal. <coughs> uh, oh, I also serve as the uh, managing editor of the journal. So if you have any questions in any way that I can help or, or if you need some resources, there is a really superb uh, piece of research done on uh, water policy and dams in China. And uh, so someone had sent me that, and uh, really all that's needed is, is a model on the end of it. It makes a really strong presentation, and really no one's done a lot of work in that area. So uh, if we can help you in any way with your research, uh, even if you don't plan to publish, uh, I get a lot of calls from PhD students, like they're stuck and what can they do. Um, anybody, like, uh, who's ABD? Yay, yay, congratulations, that's awesome, yeah. For those of you at the early stages, um, if you need some help developing your ideas, um, I did, a, for example, I did an independent study with someone who was working to develop their ideas for uh, public policy and their research, uh, or any materials that we can help you, just, just let me know. Uh, you may have to go to another university to get someone on your committee for your dissertation, and, and just check it out so you don't get too far on. You don't want to get in and have people not understand complexity. and. I think in my, my uh, proposal defense, I had one member said, what do you mean by interactions? And I was, knew I was a little, little bit in trouble, so. Anyway, but we, you know, you had to go back in and explain. Again, it's not easy for everybody, so. All right, DuPont Summit is the first Friday of December. And uh, what it is, it's a technology policy, uh, really a fun, fun, uh, fun science and technology conference. And uh, what we'll do for uh, any, any young scholars, don't have to be young in age, but young body scholars that want to practice their ideas, uh, want to practice presenting on policy and complexity, we'd love to have you join us. Uh, just send us a page. Uh, there's no, uh, no fee to present your ideas or anything. And just talk to me afterwards, and we'll see if we can get you some practice uh, presenting. Really casual, relaxed atmosphere, and then uh, hopefully we'll be able to publish something from that. Maybe an essay form, so you get some some uh, experience on, on publishing. So nothing like a major research or things like that, but just something to lack. So, okay, so that gets us started with everything. So there's a journal right there. Okay, so our goal today, again, we've talked about a little bit, uh, we're going to talk about the types of simulations, maybe how do they work, uh, where to get free simulations, uh, NetLogo is one of the places, we'll go over some of the software, the different uh, options that you can use, what some people uh, really find easy, what some people find harder, uh, adapted, again, and we'll see through some of the examples if we can adapt to some of your research needs today, at least what you've expressed would be important to you. Are we going to go over some of the vocabulary, some of the tools? We'll do some hands-on, um, some critical thinking. And again, you've got a background or a guide if you need it. Uh, if you need some slides, if you need to present something, just let me know. We've got plenty of slides if, if you need to present something on it. No need to uh, recreate the wheel on that. So we're going to ask you to just relax for a minute. Okay, just relax. Tough getting here, your iPhones are down, no email for a second, and you're just going to take a couple pieces of the puzzle. Okay, You've got a problem or something you're going to think about? The world. So how would you model the world? So what part of the world would you model? So when we think about that, that's the type of thinking we're uh, really focusing on with complex systems. Okay, complex systems, uh, uh, one way to think about it is the parts are greater than the whole. What, what does that really mean? The part, uh, you hear that all the time, that's a pretty standard definition. Uh, so if you think of a simple system, uh, you know, I pour water, too much water in, it, it, it flows out. Okay, that's a simple system. 
A complicated system is, say, an airplane. Okay, we take all the pieces apart, and there's someone in the universe, there's wonderful people that can do, they can put it back together. I'm sure I couldn't put any of it back together. So, and we can pretty much predict that if we put the pieces back together, the airplane's going to function, and, and everything's going to be okay. But if you pick something complex, uh, anybody have an example of a complex system? Military. Military can be a complex system. What are some other examples? The climate. Climate, yeah, excellent. Mm -hmm. Especially uh, prediction weather and forecasting is very, very complex or chaotic. Uh, the brain. Economy. So if we were going to model the economy or if we were going to explain the economy, it would be hard to put it back together with all those pieces. So those are the things. How can we conceptualize or look at some of those constructs and putting things back together? What we usually do, or what we're comfortable uh, in the past, all of you here are because uh, looking at something a little bit different, we get a research area. Okay? Uh, mine, uh, mine was nanotechnology. That was my little fad for a while. I'll go through all these little phases. But uh, it was nano policy. I just knew everything about it, and every cocktail party, I would just scare people away. Like, oh my gosh, ask me something about it. So, and so we tend to get a little isolated. We tend to be experts on it. We know everything about it. We can see every part. So complex systems or complexity allows us to work with different types of people, try to unite systems and uh, different strains of thinking from uh, different areas. And uh, if you can, uh, I've, done, I've done research with all these different types of people in different areas, uh, especially computer scientists, and uh, it gives you something very different, kind of an emergent outcome. Okay. So why is it challenging? Um, it's still a pretty new field. Uh, it's still kind of confusing, really, what it is. What can we capture? What can we learn? How, how can we really um, epistemologically really validate what we do? So again, still new, still working on that, on the agent-based models, how we can make the models better. Um, still not a lot of strict protocols or best practices on that. Um, uh, Railsback and Grimm have a book and they have a protocol on that. If anybody needs that information like for your research, you probably really would want to include that. Uh, Niles Gilbert has a book on agent-based models, so that would be a really good source to include in there. Those would be some of the names that if you were going to do your research that you, you pretty much see those um, over and over. So. So thermometry of complexity. So for another discipline, right, Newtonian science, okay, we can figure things out. So what do we need to figure out with uh, complexity or with research? We've got behavior in time and behavior in space. And then to make it more complicated, it all happens at the same time, doesn't it, sometimes? We have uh, the independent variable and the dependent variable both interacting at the same time. And you have lots of dependent variables and lots of independent variables that can all interact at the same time. So this gives us maybe a different way or a different conceptual frame to look at. When you move up the scale, okay, we know about chaos a little bit. Turbulence, we're getting better. Fibrillation, we're getting better. But uh, again, up to consciousness, uh, human society, very complex. We still don't know the laws. Global economy, still don't know the laws. So again, just a way to think about complexity. How we're doing. So new research tools uh, capture some of these trends. If you think about um, systems, okay, if you think, say, a classroom, an educational policy. Uh, I'm doing some research with Ghana right now uh, and just got back uh, from North Ghana, which is always exciting. And they don't always have electricity for computers and the electricity goes out, but I just thought I'd add it in there. So Anyway, so uh, thinking about a classroom in northern Ghana, okay, so what types of systems? Uh, it can be a simple system. Uh, the students just don't have food and water when they go to class. That's a simple system. There's an impact on, on, on the behavior, the outcome. Uh, it's complicated. Um, as far as uh, complicated systems on how the educational system and how policy is designed because there's partnerships. And then uh, it's complex because you've got all the learning, uh, complexity of each individual's brain and the complexity of the interactions that are going on in the classroom. And then chaotic, in case if uh, someone came in with a gun or whatever, and that would make things chaotic, and we wouldn't be able to predict it. So again, even how you sat today is part of self-organization. No one told you to sit there. So complexity gives you away from bottom up, how things organize. No one tells the ants how to build that ant pile. Okay, they, just, they do it on their own. And ants do it by one simple rule, one simple feedback rule. 
Anybody know what that is? Pheromones. They leave, they leave a scent and they just follow. So our goal is to be as good as ants as far as feedback. And uh, they're pretty amazing. There's a whole research uh, area on ants and, and ant colonies. They're, I think they have a conference every year. So again, what are our tools? Uh, we got ants up there, don't we? Uh, so this is agent-based uh, models or multi-agents. So we can model, instead of heterogeneous agents, like we have everybody from, um, uh, say, the same region, we can do it for five or six different regions. We can do it for different countries, and we can put those in as agents and assign them attributes. Uh, cellular autonoma, automata. Uh, again, this is off an Excel sheet. Uh, this is if we're all neighbors, if all of us are neighbors, and, and I'm sitting with you, and I want the University of South Carolina to beat Ohio State in the first playoff, what's, what, am I going to change your view? Probably not. Yeah, so the influence of neighbors, and then we can put those rules. But if I paid you a million dollars, if I put that rule and I paid you a million dollars and I paid you a million dollars, would, would you change and root for South Carolina? Probably not. Okay. <laughs> okay, not the best example, but okay. But that might influence, okay? So if we put that rule in there, and uh, uh, again, um, some of you talked about evolution, you can even add uh, an evolutionary. Algorithm. An algorithm is just a fancy word for a way to solve a problem. Okay? The, they, they love to throw that around in computers. Anybody computer scientists here? Good. Okay. Not good. They'll come this afternoon. They're awesome. Okay, so again, you could just add on. Like a population, you could just add on. Like every iteration or every time you put the code in, you add on the population maybe grows 2%. Or you're, each time you learn something new, you can add on more to your model. And again, just what we talked about, you've got just binary values. Hello, how are you? Uh, just uh, your neighbors, uh, either a zero or a one. You've got cells right, left to itself, and you've got the different binary uh, states that you can use. And this just goes through when you put through some of the, uh, some of the possibilities. And uh, there's a really cool thing, Game of Life, that uh, if you've got some extra time, you can look at some of those things. Network analysis. Anybody work in network? Analysis? Okay, so there's social network analysis. There's different types of uh, analysis. Uh, if you look in the right side of the screen, you'll see that's Al Qaeda. That was before 911. And that should be Muhammad Atta at the uh, right in the middle. So he had the most contacts, and you said, well, hey, now you tell us, but why didn't you tell us before? Okay. So, yeah, so trying to figure out what networks are. Networks are just the structure and the architecture. Uh, one way to think about it is flow of information, flow of traffic. Uh, again, the power law, if you're not familiar with it, um, comes up a lot in networks. Uh, there's Google, there's a few, big, a few big hubs, right? Google and Chrome or whomever are on the internet when you search. So think about those and then lots of little sites. So the power law just means like 20% uh, of the people will have 80% of the wealth, maybe Pareto principle. So different ways of power law is um, Represented depending on your uh, institute or your, your discipline. So, we got data mining. Anybody working in data mining? Okay. Uh, one thing to think about uh, a friend of mine did uh, <coughs> neural net, a neural net analysis. Uh, it, which is, it just found out, he wanted to find out all the correlations of the relationships. Uh, it was uh, Wichita State. Uh, President of the University gave him all the data, he wanted to know about student retention. Uh, ran all the regressions, knew nothing. Had all the money, had all the time, the research assistance to do whatever. So then he ran a neural net or data mining, a, a, a type of data mining research. And what he found out that there were two factors that matter. Okay, why uh, students either stay in school or drop out. One was if they had a loan, and number two was if they had a scholarship. So what they came up with is different policies. They started giving scholarships for fifty and hundred dollars and things like that. That 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 was again the information they didn't get through those sources. So uh, you got scenario modeling, sensitivity analysis, and dynamic systems modeling, which uh, they use a lot to know weather. Okay, you guys know about this stuff. Your statistical roadmap. We know it's kind of finite. It, it gives us oh so much. Um, one thing to think about is th this is what drives your data. This is what drives your models. This is what makes your models good. Your models are only as good as the data underneath it. 
begin thinking about more of those. Uh, we've got all these different tools that we can use. You guys have uh, seen all that. But what are the limits? Okay. A lot of times isolated uh, systems. So if you do regression analysis on, uh, let's say, troop movement in the Ukraine, well, how about troop movement in Russia? How about troop movement? So we need to start thinking how one system fits with another system. Usually the term used is called nested systems. So, uh, and I guess this is a perfect time. Um, do we have any volunteers? How about the right side of the room and the left side of the room? Okay, if that's okay. And what you're gonna do, you're gonna have one team leader and you're gonna pick a policy problem. Let's pick, who, who wants to pick a policy problem? How about Russia, Ukraine? Conflict, is that okay with everybody? All right, so these are all the pieces of your model, okay? You gotta pick out which systems. You've got the earth, you've got countries, cities, nationalities, economy, organizations, groups, environment, social systems, and the state. So what you need to do is figure out how you put those together for your model, okay? Do you wanna go ahead and, and do you want a team leader up here? How about, do you wanna be team leader up here? These are it, and then you get extra to put together, okay? These are your different attributes of your models. And you're gonna need to help them out in the group. Yeah. These are all the systems. These are all your potential systems. I left out the universe, okay? I did not put the universe on there. He's gonna need some help. That's true. I, I didn't mean it that way, I meant it. I meant it was like a group activity. It's also true that way, though. Oh. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> all right, how, how are our modelers doing? All these Pretty good? Very elegant. Very elegant. Very elegant. <laughs> <laughs> Can we wrap up a little bit? We getting close to wrapping up? Uh, no, no. We have to have committee meetings and staff meetings on this.